Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the University of Michigan School of Public Health graduate admissions information session. My name is Mary Beth Carroll, and we'll get started in just a second. If you could let us know in the chat that you can see me and hear me, that would be great. Also, please feel free to share where you're logging in from and what your department of interest is. Thank you, we'll get started in just a second. Great, well, thanks for letting me know that you can see and hear me. That's definitely important before we get started today. Um, with that being said, as you saw, um, this session is being recorded. So know if you do have to pop out, we will be sharing the recording after today's session. In addition to that, another logistical piece that I'll share is I am joined this afternoon by our student affairs uh, support team member, Levi Rose, who's in the chat box, and also four of our current student admissions ambassadors who will introduce themselves in just a little bit. So please feel free to ask questions throughout the session. We are a team here to support you and help you throughout your application process. And we definitely recognize that December 1st, which is our priority deadline, is coming up quickly. Um, so with that, again, please don't be shy if, if you have questions. We are, are here to help you along the way. Um, so I'm so happy to be speaking with you this afternoon. One of my favorite parts of my job is really connecting with our prospective students. I work in the Office for Student Engagement and Practice as our Assistant Director of Student Affairs, and I've actually worked at the school for about nine years. So I can truly tell you that this is a wonderful, welcoming community, and I, I'm really happy that I'm able to share with you a little bit more about us today. Um, so as our formal presentation gets started, um, Please, again, like I said, feel free to interact during the chat box. And I do wanna mention that today's session is primarily geared towards our residential Masters of Public Health, as well as our Masters of Health Services Administration degree programs. So we'll talk about those degree programs, as well as our six departments, including our online program, and then a little bit about the application process as well. So this first picture here is of my daughter, Vivian, and her shirt says, choose happy. And she is happy, at least in this moment. But, um, you know, as 2020 has been um, unpredictable, two-year-olds can be unpredictable as well. Um, so with that being said, I want you to know that leadership at the University of Michigan, as well as at the School of Public Health, have been making public health-informed decisions since the onset of the pandemic. With that being said, these decisions certainly um, haven't been easy, but I can tell you that um, school leadership is making these decisions um, today, tomorrow, and until really the, the pandemic is with us. Um, this past fall semester, we have been able to meet our students where they're at and, and also where they're comfortable at. Um, so we have offered um, in-person courses, virtual courses, as well as some that are hybrid as well. Um, so know that by coming here and joining us for fall 2021, we don't exactly know what that's going to look like but know that we will continue to keep you informed um, to ensure that you have the, the safety and the support that you need to, to um, get a world-class education. Um, and that is something that we deliver here at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. So this first slide talks about public health and really what is public health. Um, as you can see over on the side there, we define it as the science and art of preventing disease prolonging life and promoting physical health and efficiency through organized community efforts. And if you think about it, you know, public health really is all around us. It's the quality of the air we breathe. It's the flu shot that you're probably getting right now at the pharmacy. Um, it's the ethics of genetic testing. It's the creation of policies that even govern our healthcare system. If you're applying to, to schools of public health and you're familiar with the public health field, you'll find that the commonality um, between these specific core areas of study, also known as departments. So um, we have a, a very um, different series and offerings here at Michigan Public Health. Um, sometimes students do apply to multiple departments um, as well as different degree programs. So know um, that that is something that, that we see pretty regularly. In addition to that, uh, one of the things about public health that I want to point out as well is there are certainly a lot of different career offerings and career trajectories within different sectors of employment upon graduation. Um, with that being said as well, there's no specific undergraduate degree or set of professional work experience that you have to have to apply to Michigan Public Health. Um, we get students from all different backgrounds, um, some typically with no more than five years of professional work experience and some straight from undergrad. So we truly do have a pretty diverse student population um, from all walks of life. Um, and the beauty of coming to a large public research institution like the University of Michigan is that you'll be supported no matter where you're coming from. 
with that, it, it's also, you know, worth noting that if you hear something in the news, especially right now, it's likely that there is a public health angle to it. Um, so the common denominator here really is that everything we do in public health is about improving the health of people, but at a population level. This slide here highlights a little bit about Ann Arbor, Michigan. If you haven't been here, I would definitely encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, which we can put a link in the chat box. We have some awesome uh, videos that highlight the city of Ann Arbor. Uh, one of the great things about this area that is that it is affordable to live here. Um, in comparison to um, some of the major cities on the West Coast or the East Coast, uh, you'll find that um, we have some of the, the uh, same uh, large city metropolitan area amenities, but but like I said, it's, it's a lot less expensive and you still have those same amenities available to you. Also, if you are logging in from across the country or really across the world, which some of you probably are, um, the Detroit Metropolitan Airport is just about 30 minutes outside of Ann Arbor. There are regular buses um, that are going to and from campus to the airport regularly. So that's also something um, that is no, no worth, uh, worth noting as well. So this slide talks a little bit about our school and our community. And I, I think that it's always really helpful um, to, to take a deeper dive to learn a little bit more about us. Um, the School of Public Health has about 1300 current students. This includes graduate residential, online students as well, and a smaller upper level undergraduate population too. Um, we have about 170 faculty. And if you're interested in research, we have about 34 research centers. As a graduate of the other University of Michigan, you become part of one of the world's largest alumni networks. Um, as noted on the slide here, our faculty to student ratio is nine to one. And I think a lot of times when people hear about us, um, they think they're just gonna be a number lost among the crowd. And I want you to know that we strive to support our students from all angles. Um, we are really a layer of support here at the University of Michigan, where you're getting support university-wide, at the school level, and then even within your department. So it's a team approach um, to making sure that our students have a successful transition and also um, land, land a job, which is, again, part of the, the ultimate goal, right? Um, you'll have um, a, a faculty advisor as well as department staff who will support you too. Um, there's also a careers team um, that has three professional staff members as well as a team of current students who help do department specific programming. They will do anything from um, LinkedIn profile reviews to, you know, you landing a job and telling them that you need help negotiating a salary. All of our current students also have access to our Career Connection database, which hosts internships, fellowships, and full-time employment, and that's a cradle-to-grave service. So as a new current student, all the way through your time as a student at Michigan Public Health and even as an alum, you will have access to this system. So just a few support services things to, to think about. In addition to that, we have over 40 student organizations where students can get involved within a particular area of interest or within um, their department. Um, with that being said, we really want our students to feel engaged, connected, and a sense of belonging um, inside and out of the classroom. So this next slide talks about our various degree programs. Um, first, we'll draw your attention to the degrees listed under professional. Um, the Masters of Public Health is our flagship degree here at the school. We offer two different programs, one residential that takes place in Ann Arbor, which is 60 credits in about two years, and also our newer online MPH, which is focused in population and health sciences, and that's fully online and, and very exciting as well. We have a 20 month program uh, with 42 credits. If you are logged in today and you're interested in that opportunity, there will be a webinar hosted tomorrow about that online MPH as well as our MS program. So please feel free to check out our recruitment calendar for information about that. In addition, we also have a Master's of Health Services Administration, which is similar to an MBA, except for all the classes are tailored specifically to the healthcare field. If you are interested in more research-based work, um, we do offer Masters of Science programs as well as PhDs as well. In addition to that, uh, the University of Michigan is made up of 19 schools and colleges. As a public health student, you will have access to take courses at any of these schools. Um, in addition to that, we do have some certificate programs within specific areas like global health, uh, genetics, health informatics. So another way that you can further get 
an area of expertise within another area too. We have 97 graduate programs ranked top 10 in the country. So really you'll have the ability to learn from leaders within other fields. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. Uh, the school also has a set of formalized dual degree programs that are listed on our website. If you are interested in this opportunity, you have a couple ways in which you could go about seeking those opportunities. One would be from the get-go applying to both schools separately as a normal applicant. The second would be if you were to start one graduate program and then want to add another, that would be a separate application process and that would allow you to bypass our CAS system, which is our common application system SOFIS. Um, so if you are interested in learning more about that, please don't hesitate to reach out. So this next slide talks about our application requirements. The MPH and MHSA, of course, like I said, um, utilize SOFIS, which is our common app for schools of public health. Um, so definitely think about that. Um, we have a few different essays that are required. Um, the first being the statement of purpose, um, addressing questions such as why Michigan public health. We want you to talk about your future goals and aspirations. And then, you know, if, if there is a faculty member or an area of interest um, research wise, we want you to share that here too. Um, this is really where faculty want to see your voice come through. So, so that's one thing to think about as well. The second is our reflective essay, which is shorter. And specifically, there are two things within this piece. One being what specific um, characteristics do you have that can contribute to our diverse student population? And then secondly, if there are areas of concern to your application, such as the low GPA, or um, you, know, you feel like you lack experience or something happened in your past, um, please feel free to share that as well. Uh, we also do have a newer piece of our um, application, um, which is the quantitative experiences statement. This is a new addition to our application this year. I'll have Levi put that in the chat for you so you can see exactly what, what that is and what that requirement is. Basically, we want you to share any um, previous coursework or experience that you have working with data. Um, as all of you hopefully know by now, as been is presented on our website, we have eliminated the requirement of the standardized test for fall 2021 applicants. So with that, we have this new quantitative experiences statement. So please feel free to check out word for word what exactly that is. In addition, we require three letters of recommendation, and we really wanna ensure that you are setting yourself up um, for good letters of recommendation. So starting out by asking your recommenders, can you write me a good letter is, is a great place to start. You wanna make sure that you provide them with ample time and that you prepare them adequately. So with that being said, you wanna provide them with um, you know, your resume, uh, application essays, um, even just having a candid conversation about what public health is and what your career aspirations are. All of those things will put you on the track for getting uh, great letters of recommendation. In addition to that, we do want to see um, preferably a letter on letterhead, as well as a letter that is signed with provided contact information. So shall we have questions about your application? Um, so those are just a couple things to keep in mind as well. And also when it does come to your resume, I just want to mention that we definitely want to encourage you to highlight academic accomplishments, any relevant uh, courses that you've taken, awards or research. So just a few other things to keep in mind. So this next slide here really just highlights um, things that we want you to start to kind of think about as you're preparing your application. We wanna see the full picture of your academic and professional background. And we recognize that it takes a lot of time to put all of this information together. So please make sure that you are looking into these details prior to starting the application so that you can ensure that you're prepared adequately. Um, so thinking about, again, all of those extracurricular activities you've been involved in, things like research, professional work, service, and volunteer are, are all things that we're looking for. So this next slide here um, talks a little bit about how your application is going to be eval evaluated. All of the application components listed here take into consideration. Um, there isn't one thing that's going to make or break your application, and I want you to know that your application will be reviewed by at least two faculty members who are looking again for that total package. As a school, uh, we practice a holistic review process when making our graduate student admission decisions. So this process really ensures that there isn't one single factor that either leads to accepting or excluding a student from admission. So just something to keep in mind. 
So this slide dives a little bit deeper into our timeline. As I stated at the beginning, we are in the process of um, we're in the process of preparing for our priority deadline, which is going to be December 1st, and it's coming up very quickly. Again, this is our priority deadline for complete applications prior to um, prior to the, the final deadline, which will be not until June this year. So that's something to think about as well. Um, in addition to that, our hard deadline that we have for international applicants, as you can see noted on this slide, is January 15th. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Um, if you are interested in our online programs or um, our MS and PhD, um, we would want you to, to take a look at our website for more information about that. So this next slide talks a little bit about funding and we recognize that funding is a big, big piece of your decision-making process. Uh, with that being said, we encourage all applicants to complete the FAFSA form. Um, that makes sure that you, from the get-go, are considered for different funding options that may become available to you. Um, with our priority deadline on December 1st, we want you to know that your application will, um, if complete, will serve as your application for our Dean scholarships as well. So there's no separate application that's needed. Um, once you will are admitted, you'll be evaluated for our Dean scholarship. And one thing to think about within the application process is that the email address you're using um, to submit your SOFIS application will be the official email address that we communicate with you with. So make sure that you're checking that email regularly. That's where your admission decision will come as well as that funding piece too. About 35% of our students receive this type of aid. And as you can see noted here, we award about 4 million in aid each year. So I'm gonna pause here for a moment and we will open it up to questions. Um, we have about 10 minutes left. And as I mentioned earlier, we have four of our current student admissions ambassadors here. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to them and we will have them introduce themselves. Each of them will say their name, their department and year, and um, one maybe fun fact about them. So as they're doing that, please feel free to think about any questions that you have. We will take those via the chat once we're done with those introductions. So with that being said, Liz, do you wanna kick us off with introducing yourself, please? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Liz. I am a current first year in the MHSA program. Um, so happy to take any questions about that. And I also went to Michigan for undergrad. I graduated in 2018 studying kinesiology. So have some, some more science background there. Um, fun fact about me over the summer during quarantine, um, my favorite morning activity has been doing the mini crossword from New York Times. Hey everyone, my name is Brandon. Um, I am a first year student in the HBHE program. I'm also a dual student in the Masters of Social Work program. Um, I also was a Michigan undergraduate student and double majored in biopsychology, cognition, neuroscience, and international studies with a minor in community action social change. And one fun fact is that I have played global music. So I've done like Chinese music, Indonesian orchestra, and Afro-Cuban drumming. All right, hi everyone, I'm Maria. I am also a first year um, MPH student in the Department of Health Behavioral Health Education. I got my undergrad from the University of Arizona in 2018 and I um, got my BS in neuroscience and cognitive science with a minor in psychology. Um, and a fun fact um, right now is that we just got a foster puppy. So we are now fostering a Yorkie um, and that's been definitely the highlight of the week. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sheba. I'm a first year uh, student, MPH student in health behavior and health education as well. Um, I also went to Michigan for undergrad and I studied neuroscience there. And um, fun fact about me is that I just finished The Queen's Gambit, which I highly recommend on Netflix. Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. As I mentioned, um, we have a population of current students who are part of our current student admissions ambassador program. And they're truly, you know, a, a wonderful group who volunteers their time out of their busy schedules, especially right now, um, to really be in extension of our recruitment and admissions team. So they're here um, to answer any questions that you might have about the student experience. Um, while you all are thinking about that, um, I'll kick off the first question to them, which would be, why did you choose to come to Michigan Public Health? And this is an informal conversation, so please feel free to just chime in and add as you see fit. 
I can start. Um, so I took intro to public health um, during undergraduate here, while I was an undergrad here. And um, I realized that Michigan public health is very interdisciplinary, even though there's six different departments. Um, it's very easy to take classes and collaborate with other students in other departments, um, as well as the faculty. They also do very interdisciplinary research inside and outside of SPH, um, which is really exciting. I can follow up on, on that. So I think being a undergraduate student at Michigan, like I recognize how many resources and support was offered the university. So um, that was like one of the huge, I guess like factors in like me continuing to stay here because part of me wanted an institution, um, but I also recognize just how amazing Michigan was all um for my best experiences so i just have to stay here and continue being a mission i'm happy to chime in too i think one of my favorite things about the hmp program um, is that we're very much encouraged to reach out through other programs and schools within the university um so we have a i think it's about 16 credits of electives that you can pick from literally any school within uh, the whole university which um, as you guys research more and more about Michigan, um, I'm sure you'll find that there's a lot of great and interesting programs out there. So it's nice to be encouraged to have those interdisciplinary experiences as well. I definitely would echo everything my peers have mentioned. I think that the biggest um, thing for me is the collaborative interdisciplinary nature of this um, School of Public Health. You you hear about faculty research and like when you start reading, you know, their publications and things like that, you see, you identify other faculties on there as well. And I think that that's really nice and refreshing. It's that um, it's encouraged, but it's also very reflected upon the departments um, here. So I think a collaboration and the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature is um, the biggest um, thing for me. Great. Well, thank you all. Um, a question that I would have um, for the group would be, what types of activities are you involved in outside of the classroom? I think one of the major benefits of coming to the University of Michigan, like we've kind of talked about are a lot of opportunities and resources and support and that kind of thing. Um, so if each of you could maybe speak to maybe a student organization or something that you do within the Ann Arbor community, for those who aren't um, super familiar with the area, it might be helpful for them to hear a little bit about what that looks like. Um, I'm happy to get us started on that one. So I am a research assistant within the Department of Health Behavior Health Education. Um, I'm also a part of uh, Public Health Awakened, which is a non-UM affiliated organization, but it does public health outreach throughout the entire state of Michigan. So we collaborate with other universities and um, just other public health practitioners all around. Um, and then I'm also part of uh, La Salud, which is a student organization here at UMich that um, focuses primarily on Latinx health disparities and doing outreach and intervention through that route. As far as student orgs, I'm involved mostly with um, women in healthcare leadership, as well as um, an organization that's a little more professional focused, um, Michigan Healthcare Executive Student Association. So. I like that balance of more personal and professional um, professional development in that sense. Um, something else I really like, obviously I'm interested in talking to prospective and current students. Um, I love doing stuff like this, learning more about who wants to be part of our um, school, as well as the mentoring opportunities that are available throughout the department, as well as with undergrads. I get a lot of energy from that. Um, so two of the organizations or groups on campus I'm a part of are uh, HIPSA, which is the Health Policy Student Association. So they focus on um, building your research and advocacy skills. Um, and I'm there as a non-HMP uh, student. Um, so it's also very collaborative across the departments. And um, another campus position I have is with the Adolescent Health Initiative, which is um, with Michigan Medicine. And it's focused on um, making healthcare and behavioral health services uh, adolescent focused and centered. I am a part of a couple of different things. Um, so the first one is just um, PHSA or the Public Health Student Assembly. I am the first year representative. Um, so it's kind of like, it's like the student council of public health. So we help plan different events and advocate for students. 
I'm also a research assistant um, within the School of Public Health, focusing on global mental health and um, LGBTQ plus health uh, in Zambia, Kenya, and I guess like the Dominican Republic as well. Um, and then I'm also part of Facade, which is um, public health um, students of African descent and a couple other things as well, um, but yeah. Great, thank you all. Um, we do have quite a few conversations going around in the chat box and we are just about getting to time. Um, before we do sign off here today, I guess one last question that I would have for our current students would be, um, you know, what advice do you have for these 60 some, you know, prospective students logged in? What's one thing maybe that you wish you would have known or something that you wish you could tell your former self um, just about graduate school and, um, you know, kind of the path you're on now? Um, I think I would say believe in your story um, and believe that it's one worth hearing. So truly try to translate that in your um, essays. Uh, public health is everywhere. So no matter what your background is, um, I know that I, coming from like a hard science background, felt like I might be at a disadvantage coming into a public health program. And like, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but um, just truly know that it's everywhere. And no matter what your background might be, you will contribute something and bring something to the table. Um, so believe in your story and definitely feel like it's one worth sharing. Yeah, kind of going off what uh, Maria was just saying, I think in hindsight, my the most difficult but also most rewarding part of the application process for me was um, all of the self-reflection you, I will say now, get to do instead of had to do um, about what your goals are, what, what you've done so far um, throughout undergrad and beyond. And Looking back on that now, I'm so glad that I put the energy into that. I think it really came out in my applications and uh, made my interviews a lot more natural and genuine. So um, like Maria said, you're doing more than enough. So uh, stick to who you are. Definitely echoing both of that, um, but also um, and also taking time to focus on what motivates you and you know what populations are you focused on or ready to serve um, and kind of how you want to structure that and think about that in your application and as your time in your time at public health or SBH. I would say um, it's like one of the biggest things that I got out of the application process and everything was just knowing my own sense of self-worth um, because I think that was just something that was very important for me like the institution that I ended up at is that I know how much I'm worth. I know like the work that I've put in to be like in these positions as a black first generation student. So I had to make sure, or I wanted to make sure that the institution saw that in me as well without me having to like ask for or like show it necessarily. And I think Michigan definitely has done that as an undergraduate student and as a graduate student so far. So yeah, I think just know your worth um, overall and stick to that when it comes to applying and funding and stuff like that. Great. Thank you all. Um, I think at this time we'll close out today's session. I appreciate all of the engagement in the chat box and it was a pleasure getting to know all of you. We will send a follow-up in the coming days with a recording of the session, as I mentioned. Um, we also are currently running a campaign if you wanna connect with one of our current students. So if you do wanna do that, please feel free to email our team. Um, at sph-inquiries at umich.edu. Um, we would be happy to put you in touch with one of our awesome current student admissions ambassadors as you've seen today. Um, so with that, we hope you have a great day and we wish you the best of luck. Please feel free to lean on us as you're working towards submitting your application for our priority deadline on December 1st. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.